All right, now we're going to talk about embedded styles. Embedded styles are the practice of placing a group of CSS styles in the head of your XHTML document. They are sometimes referred to as page styles, and basically they will allow you to have more control over the inline styles that we were just looking at. Um, let's go ahead and let's create a go ahead and create a um, embedded style and then we'll discuss a little bit about the pros and cons of using a embedded style. So here I am, this is the exact same page that we were using before, but I've stripped away all the formatting. So currently this is what it looks like in the browser. I'm going to go ahead and just minimize this and we'll create some styles. So when you create embedded styles, you actually are going to go ahead and add a style tag into the head tag. I usually put it right before my closing head tag, so I'm just going to come here and hit a couple returns, and I'll go ahead and begin my tag here. So I'm going to go ahead and type style once again. Now you can see because I haven't closed this tag, Dreamweaver has changed the color of some of my text. As soon as we basically complete this tag, then that will go away. I'm going to put style space type and this is where you're just telling um, your XHTML page what type of style you're including. You can also use the style tag to add um, JavaScript or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put type and you can see that it lists text or JavaScript. I'm going to go at or CSS and JavaScript. I'm going to select text forward slash CSS ending quotes and then I will close this tag. I'm going to hit a couple returns and I'm going to make my closing style tag. As soon as I do that you can see that all this text is no longer pink anymore so it's kind of become happy with me. And I usually just make my closing tag when I'm creating the opening tag just because it makes things a little bit easier. So the next thing that I need to do is I need to go ahead and I need to um, enter in an opening tag with and this isn't completely necessary, but I would definitely recommend it. It's helpful. I'm going to put an exclamation point dash dash. And what this does is it lets browsers that don't understand, this is basically the beginning of a comment tag. It's letting a browser that doesn't understand style sheets, it's just letting it know that it can ignore this. So I'm going to, there's my opening comment tag. I'm going to hit a couple returns. And down here before I close my style tag, I'm just going to put dash dash closing tag. All of my actual styles that I'm going to create are going to be enclosed within these comment tags and that is just so that I can hide this data from a browser that wouldn't understand it. Again, this is not completely necessary but I find it to be useful so I usually add it into my style sheets. We'll start by just styling our h2 tag like we did before. I'm going to type h2 opening curly brace and then I'm going to hit a couple returns and make a closing curly brace my CSS rules are going to go in between these curly braces. Now I generally like to have each declaration appear on its own line when I'm creating an embedded or linked style sheet and that's just my personal preference. It is perfectly fine to have your styles just in one long string similarly um, to what we did in the inline styles but I'll go ahead and do it this way. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do my font family just like we did before. Um, when you're writing pure CSS, you don't need to put the quotes like we did before. So I just put font family colon, and you can see the little tooltip pops up. So I will go ahead and add in the same as I did before, Georgia, and then I'm just going to put comma serif, and I'll end my declaration with a semicolon. I'm going to hit return, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a color value. So I'm going to type color. And again, I'll use that same hex value, that light blue color that I was using before. So I'm just going to type the hex value for that. And again, I'll terminate with the semicolon. If I now save my page and we view it in the browser, let me just refresh my page, you can see that now the header has turned blue. Unlike the inline style, when you do an embedded style, it's going to affect all H2 tags. So as I scroll through my document, everywhere that I have an H2 tag, that change has been updated. This is clearly more powerful than using the inline styles. 
the scope of an embedded style is limited to the page that contains that style, but if you are um, styling a tag, like we just did right here, you can see that it's a very powerful feature. Let's go ahead and add a couple more um, styles to our H2. So in addition to doing the font family and the color, I'm also going to add, and I'm going to add background color, and this is a way that you can obviously add background color. It's pretty nifty. I'm going to preface my hex value by the hash mark and then I'm just going to go ahead and type the value for my color that I want to use which is this really light gray so I'm using E4, E4, E4 and I'll terminate with a semicolon. I'm going to also add a border on the bottom so I'm going to go ahead and type border bottom width and those are all separated by dashes just like this and you can see my semicolon right there I'm going to assign instead of medium thin or thick I'm gonna actually just assign a pixel value I want a very thin line so I'm gonna type 1 px for pixel I'll terminate with my semicolon I'm going to set my border style so I start to write that in my tooltip pops up and I can use my downward arrow keys to select what I want and hit return or enter to go ahead and insert that into my code. I'm going to go ahead and tell Dreamweaver that I want to use a solid line. So I'll enter that and put my semicolon. And then finally I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the bottom border color and I will go ahead and add the hex value and again I'm going to use that same blue that I was using on the actual um, font itself and then I'll terminate with a semicolon. So if we now look in the browser and check out our page, you're going to see that all of the H2 tags now have a gray background and a blue line underneath. And so you can really begin to see the power of CSS here. Every H2 tag that I ever would use on this page is going to be treated as such. So that is very cool. We'll go ahead and we'll add some additional styles here to style out the rest of the page. I'm going to go ahead and make a P style to style all paragraph tags. So I like to do my opening and closing curly brace like so. And we're going to set the font family. And here I'll go ahead and just use Verdana. And then I'm going to go ahead and type san dash serif and I'll terminate with my semicolon like so. Then I'm going to go ahead and set the font size. And the font size, you can use a variety of font sizes. We'll be discussing this more in detail a little bit later on. You can use pixels, you can use inches, millimeters, um, M's. I'm going to go ahead and set my font size to 0.75 EMS. This is, I'm um, sorry, EM. This is a M value right here. M value, it's just another value like a pixel or an inch. It is used widely in web page design because when you set a value to M's, if someone is to increase or decrease their font size on their browser, M's will respond. When you set it to pixels, they are fixed. And we'll, as I said, discuss this a little bit later on. So we'll come back to that, but I just wanted to kind of introduce you to an M in case you're not sure what that was. I'm going to go ahead and set the color here. And the color that I'm going to use is I'm just going to use this gray color. And you can see I could just sample that right in the little Dreamweaver color pop-up menu. Um, another cool thing that we can do with CSS, which we're not able to do with other, you know, like if you were using straight HTML to format your pages, you can add things like line height. And this is so cool because it really gives you more of that page layout type of control with your page. So for instance, if I just set the line height to be 0.75 M's, the same as my font size, this is going to be really tight, but let's just take a quick look at it and then we can make a change and see how it responds. So if I reload the page, you can see how all of the paragraphs now respond. Now my text is very squished together and it's very hard to read. I'm going to squish this out to the right so we can see both pages. I'll click back in my code view and I'm going to change this value. I'll increase it substantially. Like let's try 1.45 M's. I'll save the page and then let's reload it over here. Now you can see I have a spacing that is more spaced out. This is different than the default spacing. If I get rid of this line altogether, I'm just going to cut it so I can 
quickly get rid of it and I've saved my page and go back into the browser and reload. This is the default value. So being able to adjust the line height really allows me to have precise control about how I want my page to look ultimately, which is very, very cool. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. I like a little bit more spacing than what is specified as the default. Um, you may have noticed that all the paragraphs got styled, our headers are styled, but my list here is not styled, and that's because the list falls in its own tag. If we look back here in the code, you can see that the list is not wrapped in a paragraph, so it does not respond to the paragraph style. We actually have to create a style for our unordered list, so let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to go ahead and make another style with my unordered list, so I'll type UL, opening curly brace, closing curly brace, just like we did before. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the font family, the font size, and the color. And I actually want all these things to be exactly the same as my paragraph tag. So I'm just going to select these and copy them. I'm using the keyboard shortcut of Command C or Control C on the PC. And then I'll paste right here using Command V or Control V on the PC and paste those values in. We'll also go ahead, let me just save this and show you what it looks like in the browser really quick. So now you can see that those things have been styled like so, and that's looking pretty good. Um, I do have a little custom graphic that I want to use for my bullet points, so I'm going to go ahead and specify that as well. And you can do that by going into your um, unordered list, and you have a property called list style image. So I'm going to go ahead and grab list style image. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify where this is going to be. You can see I can actually set it to none. If I were to use none, for instance, let me terminate with a semicolon and save, you can see that now the bullet points will completely disappear. So now, oh, why didn't that work? You know what, I think I actually have to put that on my list item instead of on the UL. I would actually have to put that on my list. Let me see if we actually want to get rid of that. Let's just add this back in here again. We would want to use list, and I believe it is list style none. There we go. That should do the trick instead of list style image because the browser is actually looking for an image. Now you can see if I just use list style, the bullets do disappear. Um, because I had list style image, it was expecting me to set it to an image, which I had not done yet, and um, that's why it didn't. It basically ignored that rule. Kind of a cool thing with CSS is your page doesn't break if it doesn't like what you do. It just ignores it, which is kind of nice. I do want to actually put a path for an image. So when you want to put a path for an image in CSS, you're going to type URL, and then in parentheses, you'll put the path to your image. My image happens to be um, from where my page is saved in my images folder, forward slash, and it's just called bullet.gif. So I'll go ahead and type that in, closing my parentheses, and then I'm terminating with my semicolon like so. And let's go ahead and let's preview this. And now you can see I get these little custom bullets. So cool. So I just basically just have to specify the list style image, and then I specify the path for where my image is located. So you can really control just about every aspect of your web page using CSS. Now if I happen to make another list somewhere down my page, that's the only list I have. But if I happen to make another list, let's just go ahead and do that real quick so you can see this happening. I'll go into my code right here, and I'm just going to decide somewhere to make another list. Let's put one. Um, just you know at the end of this second paragraph so I'm gonna go ahead and enter a UL tag I'm gonna go ahead and just close that tag and then I'll just make my closing UL tag and then we'll just go ahead and create some list items so I'm gonna go ahead and type my LI and I'll just type one and I'll do my closing LI and I'll open another one and I'll type two, and then I'll do a closing li here. And I'll save my page, and if we reload in the browser, you're gonna see that I'm going to get another list, 
further down in the page right here and it takes on the exact same style so anywhere I have an unordered list it's going to take on this style it's really a very powerful feature and it's very fun to be able to do this let's go ahead and let's just add um, well actually that's good for now we're not going to deal with the links right now we're going to actually talk about those in a later movie because they have some some um, issues that are specific to creating links so we'll come back to that but this does introduce you to the concept of using an embedded style and you can see how much more powerful they are as opposed to the inline style if we wanted to make the page look like this using our inline styles we'd basically have to add quite a bit more code to the web page to be able to mimic this so embedded styles just in summary you know that the scope of the embedded style is limited to the page that contains the style. If you're publishing just a single page using these particular styles, then embedded style may be a good solution. You need to be aware that when you're using embedded styles, you're not truly separating the styles from the content. They're still actually located in the document. And if you want your page to be fully compliant, you should be separating styles from the content. If you're working with multiple styles for a complex document, sometimes it's actually easier to create embedded styles so you don't have to constantly switch between the markup that you're working and a separate style sheet. You don't have to go back and forth between two pages when you're testing your web page. You can just get everything working in one page and then you can move the styles to the main style sheet and replace them. Um, to be linked to styles. So that's kind of like a good way to use embedded styles just when you're working it could be a little more streamlined. Page styles, which are essentially inline styles, they win out over style sheets but um, when you're using embedded styles like this they will actually lose out to the styles that you're going to define in your inline style. So just keep that in mind. Because of how cascading style sheets work, if you use inline styles, they will trump your embedded styles. And we'll look at that a little bit later on. And that pretty much is embedded styles in a nutshell.